Hello everybody, welcome back to Dude Ranch DIY. I'm pretty sure the saying goes, when it rains, it pours. And by that, I mean that I went from having literally no more totes left, at least that I could actively stack into. I had some totes, but I was kind of using them for other stuff. And now I think I have like 23 I've gotten in the past 24 hours. So if you saw in the last video, I repaired the fenders to the Big Tech's equipment trailer. And at the end of that video, I got loaded up with all of these totes here from my buddy Chris at his place of work. You know, they grind mulch and they were getting rid of them. I think there's two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 13 totes right there. Then, that very same day, I got a call from the local place that grinds mulch that's just about six minutes down the road from my house and I just picked up 10 more. So now I got 23 totes, all ready to go. Uh, mostly large, I think I got one small in there. And uh, that's what I mean when it rains it pours, because I was in a tote drought and now spring has sprung, people are grinding mulch, and we are back in business. Today I need to get these unloaded and we are going to be readdressing the trailer. Uh, now that it is back here at the Dude Ranch, we have painting, grinding, priming, the whole nine yards. This, I think, is turning into more of a project than I anticipated, but I can't leave well enough alone. And when I saw the degree of the flaking paint on the bottom side of the trailer, I realized I need to address it. Okay, we got all those totes unloaded. One, two, three. They are all over here. Okay guys, Chris just showed up. I just unhooked this trailer, and like I said, this video is actually gonna be a continuance of working on this trailer. There's a bunch of rust and stuff, and I have to paint all these fenders and stuff anyway. Um, <clears throat> so while I was at Chris's, the other Chris's shop, I think I showed you in that other video, I started grinding away, you know, at some of the surface rust that was easily accessible, but there's a lot under there. So I think the easiest way for me to get access to most of the trailer is to flip it up on its side on these uh, nice new fenders. They hopefully are sturdy enough that uh, won't break. And uh, so Chris is here, he's going to lend me a hand and just kind of spot me. We're hoping that the tractor can do it. If not, I have a plan B and it has something to do with that international hook lift truck right over there. So uh, you think this is gonna work? I don't know, you might need me on the back. It might need you on the back or on the front pushing. Yeah. So <laughs> we'll see, let's, let's set up the camera. Okay, so you guys probably saw that. The tractor was able to lift the trailer. I think it'll be able to lift it up enough. So Chris, so I keep him around. What, what was your idea there? Uh, we're gonna move the International out of the way and instead of trying to find a prop, we are gonna use that big, beautiful oak tree and just kind of lean the yeah. trailer up against it. That should be able to support the weight, I'm thinking. Um, we just don't want to smash the International or the boat over there which that boat is going to be leaving soon but we can we'll figure that out later okay guys we just quickly got the boat moved out of the way got the trailer in position we got two big blocks um hopefully that the trailer will rest on and then we will put it up against this big oak tree um so let's see how this goes <laughs> this might be interesting Well guys, that worked much better than expected. The tractor is just there now for a little moral support, um, but we have the whole thing up on end, as you can see, and we got it tied to the tree for a little extra support. Um, so now the whole bottom side is exposed and I can get to all of these C-channel pieces. Now you can see here, 
how it's all flaking off. So I'm gonna go hard with the wire wheel and get all this powder coat off you know where it's really flaking up bad and where it's already totally fallen off here but i mean this is all like pretty much surface rust it's not too bad um and hopefully we can get this thing looking a little bit better looks, thank you it looks good for a new england trailer definitely it's not touching it at the right time yeah not a, I'm, lot of I'm, rot, a lot of surface rust but it's savable <laughs> i generally make mountains out of molehills so Yes, he does. <laughs> awesome thanks for your help and that's pretty cool that this tractor l3901 could lift up and flip this trailer we do have it up on blocks don't worry the fenders are not on the ground they're not getting dented you can see the tires free well at least that one is this one's stuck but that's okay um new lights are up off the ground uh and the whole trailer is supporting itself like this rope isn't even really tight um it's just like you know, the tire's kind of supporting it, but the rope is still there 100% for safety. Um, you know, it's not, it's not like there's a lot of weight on it. You know, this thing's not really going anywhere. I'm pushing up on it. This is the primer that I'm gonna be putting on. It's called Coro Seal Rust Converting Metal Primer. My buddy Elliot from the Everything Elliot YouTube channel uh, highly recommended that. Go check out his channel. I'll put a link to this below. Um, got some wire wheels. I actually have one of the braided ones coming that's a little bit more heavy duty. Should be here today coming from Amazon. I'm just gonna be hitting all this super flaky rust. Like you can see, just flaky paint here. Just wanna get all that off and uh, kind of clean up the metal a little bit. Now that Coro Seal stuff is rust converter. Um, you know, some spots are worse than others, like you can see here, that's, that's not good. Um, so, you know, we're just gonna have to try and make the best of it, but uh, hopefully we should be able to get this looking a lot better and at least prevent whatever rust has, you know, started, um, kind of prevent it in its, in its tracks. You know, it, it, for a New England trailer, like Chris said, it, it's, not, it's not too bad. I think this was a 2016 trailer. It's like seven years old. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna start up with the wire wheel and get to work. All right, quick little update guys. I am filthy and uh, there's a lot of material coming off. Um, I don't know that that's necessarily a good thing, but at least I'm getting it off before I go ahead and, you know, prime and rust convert and paint this thing. Uh, so let me show you how it's looking so far. So I started out with the wire wheel and it really wasn't all that great. It, it wasn't coming off as much as I had hoped. Uh, I basically did these first three, which I'm probably gonna have to go back and hit again, because as you can see, I'm just flaking stuff off with my hand here. Somewhere around like this mark, this one, I think I started, I decided to try and use the grinding wheel and the grinding disc uh, worked a lot better. You can see all of the material that's coming off here. But at this point, it's kind of gone from me painting the fenders to now I really don't see any way for me not to paint the whole trailer. I mean, at least like with, yeah, I mean like everything on it <laughs> has surface rust and the little bit of paint that is left, you know, is pretty spotty with rust as well. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. We're just gonna try and like figure this out as we go, I suppose. Um, so I'm gonna go grab the hand brush and keep on going. All right, guys, we are back a couple days later. Um, I spent some more time working on this thing yesterday, just getting more rust, more chipped paint and stuff off. But it has come to be the time where I have to do something to get this covered up with primer because it's going to rain tomorrow. Um, I'm kind of pressed for time. So I blew everything off with the uh, leaf blower the other day. I just wiped everything down with an old rag, like a damp rag to try and get off some of like the dust and stuff 
Um, but at the end of the day, I paid 500 bucks for this trailer. Um, it's a good trailer, the bones are good, but I don't have the time um, to spend, you know, and it's, it's not really worth doing a full, like, you know, crazy in-depth ordeal to, to, to fix this thing up. I'm already going way more in-depth. I did not plan on spending all this time on it. Um, so I did go ahead to make things a little easier. Um, I picked up this paint sprayer on Amazon. I have no idea if it's going to work, but I'm going to try. I got this, I got the Coro seal here, and then in here I got some random stuff. What do I got? Uh, some paint thinner to thin it out in case it, it won't spray through this thing. And then I got white and black Rust-Oleum, white for the wheels and black for the trailer. So um, it's a nice sunny day. It is a little bit windier. It's kind of like blustery, gusty. Um, Pooh Bear, it's a blustery day in the 100 acre wood. Um, but we're gonna have to make do because like I said, it's supposed to rain tomorrow and I don't want this thing to get you know worse than it already is and have to dry out and everything. So we're just gonna try and get at least this bottom part covered up with a coat of this Coro Seal rust converter paint stuff. I mean, I guess at the end of the day, it's not the end of the world if it rains because um, this stuff does convert, you know, rust converting metal primer, it says. So let's see how this does and uh, we'll give it a shot and we'll give this paint sprayer a shot. I've never done anything like this, so bear with me. I'm um, hoping that the Van Powers is able to power it. Um, so yeah, I guess we'll figure this out together. All right, so this is plugged in. Of course, now it's windy, but uh, I guess nothing left to do but try it. Okay, that's good. It seems to be spraying out a little bit. I smell paint. Um, let's try this up closer. I'm gonna need a lot more of this stuff. Well guys, we got good news and we got bad news. The good news is that one, the paint sprayer sprays the Coro Seal rust converter primer stuff. And two, it appears to be working. The bad news is one quart was not n even, even a little bit close to being enough for this whole trailer. Granted, I wasn't really planning on doing the entire trailer, but it seems to be working. Let me show you what I mean by that. So I left this front part you know, cross beam, not done at all. And you can see it's your standard, you know, rust color. Then over here, I was starting to run out. But over here, what the bottle says is that the chemical reaction of rust prevention, converter, whatever, st starts working when the rust turns from the red color, the orange, you know, typical rust color, to this blackish gray color which as you can see on this one it has done now this was like the first one that i did and i really thoroughly sprayed it um but like you can see over here the rust color is kind of gone and i think the chemical reaction you know is working like you can really see it there that deep 
like black color and this stuff dries you know clear um, even on the axle here you can see it's like black but but the issue is I I ran out of the stuff um, and they don't sell it really in stores that I can find you can like buy it online All right, guys, we are back the next day, and it's kind of like gray and lightly misting and stuff. Uh, the Coro Seal was dried black last night, and now it's kind of like this grayish color in spots. Um, I was reading on the bottle. I think that means that you need to apply more. <clears throat> now, it did say that you could apply it when it is slightly damp, um, but I'm guessing that it's probably better to apply it when it's fully dry. So I'm gonna hold off on the Coro Seal. Uh, Chris actually dropped off another bottle of it. But while we are, you know, here working, th this trailer has, <clears throat> you know, your typical seven pin, you know, plug, like RV style plug, I think they call it. And it goes up to here where there's another plug that plugs into the rest of the trailer, as you can see here. And uh, this one is missing some pins. There's only one, two, three, four, five pins there. So it's missing two pins. And I believe they are actually stuck in this one. <clears throat> um, so I don't really need that to be able to plug in. So I'm thinking I'm just gonna cut this connector out and just hardwire it um, because I don't need the ability to, you know, be able to unplug that. And I think it just acts as another, you know, point for corrosion and. Okay, so here's what we've got. We got six wires coming out from the truck side of things. That red, I believe, is just an auxiliary that isn't gonna get connected to anything. So we got brown, white, black, green, and yellow. And over here, we got brown, white, black, green, and yellow. And then these two marker lights are brown and white. Um, the brown being for um, <clears throat> tail slash running light. So I believe these brown ones that are coming off here and then for these two running lights are all going to get spliced together. Um, and then the rest of the colors will just follow suit with the red being left over um, basically for auxiliary. Okay, so, so far I got the white done and the brown done. Um, I believe that should give power to these two marker lights up here. Now, so that was the hard part because we had to get three whites going into one white and three browns going into one brown, um, you know, to send power back to the rest of the trailer. So now it should be fairly fairly straightforward, just black to black, yellow to yellow, and green to green. So we're gonna get that done now. All right guys, that was a little tedious to do and kinda hard to film given that I am on a ladder and everything. But um, here is the final product. Everything should be nice and protected from the elements. And I don't know if you can tell there, but that light, is on, that running light. Um, now, let me hop off the ladder. I backed up the truck and I just had enough uh, cable to get to my plug. But um, let me go ahead, as you can see, my headlights are on. I'm gonna go and hit the flashers. So, see the flashers on the truck are on. And uh, the flashers on the trailer are on and uh, you're just gonna have to trust me but I did go ahead and check all the other functions the brake and the turn signals and they are on hey Lou is it time for a bath are we gonna go get a bath are you a filthy puppy yes you are hey Lou now you're nice and clean are you nice and clean buddy oh yeah oh yeah oh yes thank you thank you I get a kiss for giving you a bath you sure didn't make it easy
right, guys, I got to wrap it up for the day here. But as you can see, I started at the very front with the brush and got basically back to the second axle here. Um, so more than half the trailer done. The brush is definitely the way to go. I mean, for something like this with all these little nooks and crannies, I thought the spray gun would be better, but it just created so much waste of that this Coro Seal stuff that uh, it's better to just take your time and go with the brush. You could see here's where I just applied and it's like this bluish purplish gray kind of color. And then as it dries and you move forward, you could see it just turns all that rust to this blackish color, um, which means that it's basically converted the rust and it is, uh, you know, ready for paint more or less. Like this was, this was, you know, the color in there, you know, like rust, converted rust. All right, guys, we are back. I don't even know, a day or two later. Um, I came out yesterday and finished up doing the dovetail and I got like most of this inner part of the ramp done and this top half, I did not do this bottom half, but I can do the bottom half later. For now, the bottom, the entire bottom of the trailer is done as far as the Coro Seal goes. So now we can actually start hitting it with the black Rust-Oleum paint. And I have this, where is it? This thing to hook up to the paint can and uh, it's supposed to make it a little bit easier, kind of like using a gun. Um, so I'm thinking that might be the best bet to get in to all these little nooks and crannies underneath the trailer, you know, all the C channel and stuff, the can's just a, a lot smaller. And then for the bigger parts, I might use the spray gun. Alright guys, that is four cans of spray paint down and I basically got to like the first top half of the dovetail there, but this looks really good. Uh, Chris just showed up. He hasn't seen it since we flipped it up on its side. Uh, it, is, it is a whole lot less rusty, definitely still textured. Um, yeah, you know, it's anti-slip. <laughs> yes, anti-slip, that's for sure. Uh, but no, it looks awesome. I did, have never used that... Um, rust sealant before and it looks great just as is and then uh with the paint on top of it it's it's almost like a brand new trailer yeah it it, it looks really good i mean obviously you could tell that you know there was rust at one point but this black um you know this is a first coat i'm probably going to do two coats i'd say on definitely the bottom we'll see how the top half comes out just because that was in a lot better shape um but i mean everything is looking pretty darn good. This thing is awesome. I can't believe I never had one of these things. Can Gun One. I will put a link to this in the description of the video. I got this on Amazon. I think it was like five dollars. But what a difference it makes. Eight more cans, let's get back to it.
guys, I'm gonna call that good for the bottom of the trailer. That is two coats of the Coro Seal Rust Conversion Primer and two coats of Rust-Oleum uh, Semi-Gloss Black. Um, I think it came out really good. I mean, standing from back here, it, it looks great. When you get up closer, you know, it still looks a hell of a lot better. I mean, even, even these ramps, albeit they are super beat up. Um, I got into all the little nooks and crannies as best I could. I really didn't go crazy trying to get all the um, flaking paint and stuff out of there. I got the big stuff, but it's a pretty tough area to get into. But you know what? It looks a lot better, at least from far. Um, so I'm happy with this. I think we are now at the point where I'm basically ready to uh, bring this thing down. So I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to do that, but I'm going to figure it out. That definitely could have gone smoother, but um, it's down and we didn't break anything. So that's good. <laughs> the only thing that we did was uh, we, <laughs> that was a little nerve wracking. But uh, yeah, the only thing that we lost was a, uh, a fork came out because I wasn't really thinking. And by having both the forks in the middle like that, uh, it kind of came out of like the little slot there. But uh, that is not that big of a deal. Fenders are fine. The lights are fine, I believe. Let's take a look at this side. Yep. And uh, everything's good. So that was a success. Okay, yet again, we are back the next day. And today, you can see I brought the trailer up closer to the garage. Um, we got a couple things I'd like to do. Um, we got some stake pockets like this one you can see is on there, but it's bent and cracked off. So I'd like to fix that. Um, I bought some new ones that can go on. I believe, yeah, there's just one totally missing right here. I already painted over it, but we can grind that down no problem and weld on a new one. Um, I'd like to wire wheel off the fenders and get those painted today. If we get to it, we could start on the uh, painting up the wheels, but I'd like to take off the um, wheels and hit all of this stuff in here because I wasn't able to get this side really um, because it was up in the air. But I am gonna take off the wheels, paint both sides of the wheels and the undersides of the fenders. So here we go.
Stud just broke right off. There, all of them came off easy, except for that one, and uh, just broke right in there. So, <sighs> not exactly sure why that one. That sucks. This piece was like part of an old, old fender or something, but you can see all the the dirt and just gravel, all different stuff that was up in between here and this was like there, but since Chris welded on these new fenders, we don't really need this anymore, so I'm, I'm taking this off. Good boy, Lou.
stud. Um, it's not an exact match. It's a little bit longer, but everything else seems to be right on par. So uh, we're going to get this thing put on. Alright, tires are both back on and spinning. This one always span or spun good. This one was getting hung up. Um, I thought it to be the brake and I think it was because I just went under there and adjusted it and now it spins just fine. So that's awesome. That side is done.
Vivor sent me this pretty cool uh, retractable hose reel. Uh, you might have seen that they sent me also this retractable extension cord reel. Um, I've been using that a bunch and I've been using this retractable hose reel a bunch too. You can see I have all my old hose here. I no longer have to deal with that unless I really need to go far. This is like a 50 foot um, extension and it goes right back in and uh, pulls right out. So we're gonna fire up the compressor and blow everything off before paint. <laughs> Reaches all the way out here, no problem. Okay, I just pulled out this breakaway battery and uh, as you can see, <clears throat> one of the connections is just totally gone. Uh, I was sitting, this box was filled with water, um, so it definitely was not 
waterproof um, so I'm going to order a new battery and I'll have to deal with this another time but that's just for the breakaway cable I mean the brakes on this trailer work just fine um, but I was gonna put in a new breakaway switch just because I was doing it um, so I just ordered up a new battery and uh, I'll put that on once it gets here It's been raining the past couple days, so a couple spots were showing up with a little bit of, you know, spot rust on the side here. So I just uh, decided to hit it up with a little bit of spray paint to cover them up. One spot was right there. But uh, check this out. So today, at the dump, at work, I found this guy. It's a WeatherGuard 40 gallon diesel transfer tank with a 15 gallon per minute fill right pump on it. And we hooked it up to a uh, <clears throat> jumper pack, the two wires here, and it fired right up. So this thing is pretty sweet and there's even still some diesel in it um, in the bottom. So that's uh, pretty awesome. Pretty awesome dump find of the day. All right, I got a bunch of DOT reflective tape here. Um, all the paint's dry, so we're gonna put it on starting uh, back here. All right, there's one side done with the DOT tape. It, uh, I think it looks pretty good. From far, it almost looks like a new trailer. <laughs> uh, one trick to this stuff, that one, uh, I like to put a zip tie around it um, to keep the roll you know, from unraveling itself. And as you use it, you just tighten up the zip tie. So it's a nice little trick. And then two, I like to use the heat gun to both help separate the backing um, because this DOT tape uh, you know you can put, actually pull off the reflective stuff so it's just the plastic and, and you pull off the sticky stuff so heating it up helps separate the two then obviously you run the heat gun over it once you're putting on the cold metal to uh, press it down but looks pretty good onto the other side
Well guys, that is a wrap. There it sits, awaiting its first load. I am definitely ready to get to work with this bad boy. I can be proud to tow that down the road. That's a, a good looking trailer. Like I said, good looking from far, far from good, but it is going to suit my needs just perfectly. We got those last two things, the breakaway cable and the toolbox to figure out and take care of. But other than that, um, I'm hoping this trailer is gonna be going to work this weekend. So I know this was a really long video. I know it's a little bit different than what I normally do. Um, so let me know in the comments below. I'm really curious to know what you guys think of this type of video of me kind of, you know, doing a longer form refurbish, you know, kind of working on that kind of stuff. Um, it's definitely out of the norm. I don't get the opportunity to do it a lot, but I hope you guys enjoyed because I sure had fun over these past like three or four weeks. Um, you know, just everything from making the fenders to learning how to, you know, convert rust, paint, you name it. Um, I'm happy to say that I did it all myself and I'm pretty proud that I did it myself. I think it turned out pretty good. I do have a tendency to make mountains out of molehills. So Chris called it on the very first day um, when we said that. So um, that's gonna wrap it up. As always guys, if you like the video, give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, click that subscribe button down below. I'd really appreciate it. We've been getting a ton of new subscribers um, ever since uh, the past couple days when we went out to Ohio at Ohio Woodburner. So welcome to all you new subscribers. Um, I got plenty of videos going way back, uh, you know, a couple years now, doing firewood, different stuff with different trailers and equipment. So check it out. Questions, comments, or feedback, throw it down in the comments section. I know you will. But for now, I'm Jake. This is Dude Ranch DIY. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you here next time.